Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff here to talk about the deep freeze that has uh, overtaken a huge swath of North America. Uh, if you have questions, thanks for joining us on YouTube and uh, Facebook Live. I've got a great producer who'll be sending me your questions, so keep them rolling and I'll see how many I can get through. But I just thought I would start off with an overview of what's going on. You've probably heard that infamous term polar vortex resurfacing on the headlines. Uh, let's start with a quick look at where this deep freeze is in place right now. Here's a look at the current wind chills across the country. And I am using wind chills and we are going to talk more about wind chills uh, if you'd like. Uh, temperatures are uh, maybe a 10 degrees cooler, but we've got a very brisk northerly wind across the prairies through Ontario and into Atlantic Canada. And that's uh, bringing the feels like uh, conditions down to minus 40 right now when Winnipeg, minus 30 for Toronto, and even colder as we head into the U.S. U US Midwest, uh, Chicago, feeling like minus 41 right now. And if I can just bring you over to Environment Canada's warning map, you can see all of the red. These are all of the extreme cold warnings in place. So they extend from Saskatchewan all the way through to parts of Atlantic Canada. Uh, we've also got snow squalls in place for southern Ontario. Lots of winter weather uh, happening today, but it's all thanks to this polar vortex that has once again sunk down across the country. Uh, NASA actually tweeted uh, a great little explainer here uh, to do with the polar vortex. So the polar vortex is actually a meteorological term for the swirling air mass that's always in place around the extreme north. But every once in a while, the jet stream, which is the fast band of moving air in our upper atmosphere that carries weather systems and also divides different air masses, every once in a while, that jet stream meanders in a way that allows that polar vortex to spill down across the lower latitudes. So in this case, you can see all of these blue colors uh, in the past week uh, spilling down across Canada and into the U.S. Midwest. Interestingly, being pushed down by very mild air on the other side of the globe. So that's what we've got going on right now. An undulating jet stream, a dropping polar vortex, and wind chill and extreme cold warnings across a huge swath of the country. So uh, if you've got questions, send them in on Facebook and YouTube. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff to talk about the deep freeze that is in place across almost all of the country right now. Uh, getting some questions already, uh, Peggy Laughlin, on Facebook comments, uh, where I am in Manitoba today, can you talk about what Manitoba is experiencing? So Manitoba is actually getting into the heart of the polar vortex or the heart of the cold air. If I can take you back to uh, these current conditions right now, you can see the whites on my temperature contour map. That's uh, well below the minus 30 temperature as far as degrees Celsius. You factor in some very brisk northerly winds and wind chill is uh, minus 40 right now in through Winnipeg. I, I want to take you to another graphic to kind of show you what's going on in the bigger picture. I've expanded the contour out uh, to show you the whole world. So you can see here these whites again that's the minus 30 temperatures digging down right into the U.S. Midwest. So everyone's seeing those whites that's where temperatures are minus 20 to minus 30 right now. And I'm going to show you normal Normally, this air mass would be sitting up around uh, the Arctic, but it's actually being pushed down our way because of very mild temperatures happening in Eastern Europe right now. Uh, this is what's forced that Arctic air mass out of place and into North America. The atmosphere is always trying to balance uh, its energy and uh, that undulating jet stream has allowed that cold air to dip down across a huge swath. And yes, Manitoba is in the heart of it right now. Michael Horst on Facebook asks, when will it get warm again? Yes, very fair question. Uh, let me show you one of the uh, forecast models I was looking at because the polar vortex, when it slips down like this, often gets stuck for a few days. And we can talk more about this if, you, if you'd like. Uh, blocking patterns are something we're watching more and more of in a warming climate, surprisingly. Uh, climate change has meant that we're seeing the Arctic warm faster than the rest of the globe. And it's that temperature difference that actually feeds the jet stream. So when the jet stream is fueled by those temperature differences, it's moving very quickly around the globe, carrying weather systems, uh, so you only see the weather for a couple days at a time. 
But when we see the Arctic warm faster than mid latitude levels, the jet stream ends up undulating and becoming sort of lazy and dipping down uh, much farther than normal. And that's when weather systems can get stuck in place. So we are in a bit of a blocking pattern right now. So I do see this cold air sticking around for a couple more days. Take a look at the wind chill forecast for central Canada. Uh, this is this afternoon. You can see minus 29 and through Toronto taking you through the overnight into Thursday morning, uh, even colder for Ontario, Quebec, and really starting to filter into the Maritimes now. Once we head into Friday, uh, very similar wind chills. It's Saturday uh, that we'll start to see some milder air move back in from the south. So you're going to have to wait until the end of the week into the weekend to see temperatures recover uh, across the prairies and in through the eastern half of the country as well. So a couple more days to go. Uh, Cat Hall Ochre comments on Facebook. How do we get it to go to Vancouver? We should all suffer together. I'm glad you brought this up because full disclosure, I am talking to you from the West Coast and I won't linger too long on the kind of weather we've been having. Uh, January was very warm and very mild here on the West Coast. So uh, we are seeing early blooms of flowers and uh, we were down to just zero last night. So really one of the only places across the country not under this polar vortex is the extreme west. What we would need to get into this cold air is a big Arctic outflow system. That's the only way the West Coast really gets into this Arctic air. And even then it's always modified because the Pacific Ocean is so much milder. We never truly see a big Arctic deep freeze and I'll only say this once because I didn't have to shovel out from it uh, yesterday for those of you in Toronto but being originally from Toronto I kind of missed the uh, big uh, snow dumps that we just don't see here on the west coast but I know I'm also not suffering in it right now so uh, yes don't think we're going to get this kind of cold weather on the west coast uh, great questions coming in if you're just joining us on Twitter and Facebook I'm meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff here to take your questions on the extreme cold right now and I've got my producer sending me the questions here on my phone uh, Steve Jenkins on Facebook asks are we having an El Nino this year Great question. So El Nina and La Nina are these large scale weather patterns uh, that we get. They originate actually in the waters of the equatorial Pacific. In fact, I think I just might have an explainer graphic here. Um, here we go. So normally in an El Nino event, waters in the equatorial Pacific uh, are warmer than normal and that changes jet streams all over the world. In an El Nino year, typically, uh, we see uh, a, a colder than normal setup for most of the country in La Nina, which is what we're getting in right now, uh, warmer than normal. So you'd think uh, that we would not be in a La Nina year because of this deep freeze, but it's an overall trend. And a couple things to consider when we talk about these El Nino, La Nina events, the stronger influence actually happens in Western Canada because those jet streams are flowing west to east across the country. So a La Nina typically means warmer than normal for the West, which is actually what we've been having this year. And then the effects diminish as you go west to east across the country. Also, uh, La Nina is still getting stabilized or, or, or building. So we might actually see the effects as we head into late winter, early spring across the country. And again, it is averages so even in an El Nino or a La Nina year we can still see those extreme fluctuations which is what we're getting now. Anne Green asks on Facebook how is this tied to global warming? Uh, yes I'm, I'm glad you brought it up um, every time it seems we get one of these deep freezes there are questions from people about how how can our planet be warming when we're seeing all-time record-breaking cold temperatures but it all ties back to the jet stream, which is something we've been talking a lot about, that band of fast moving air that carries our weather systems around the globe. And there have been a lot of recent studies connecting climate change to changes in our jet stream. And a warming planet is warming the, the uh, northern parts of our planet faster than the rest of the world. And so that means there's less of a temperature difference in the northern parts of the world, and that's less fuel to feed the jet stream. So rather than flowing in sort of a west to east pattern, it ends up undulating more, and we end up seeing more of these blocking patterns. And in this case, that blocking pattern has allowed all of that cold air from the Arctic to spill down across North America. So we may see more of these events uh, already. We've 
uh, data has shown that uh, these blocking patterns have increased in time over the past uh, century because of climate change and our climate models show we will see more of these blocking patterns. So the thing to remember with climate change as I'm sure most of you know is that it doesn't mean everything gets warmer all at once. It actually means we see more extremes and the baseline for all of our weather shifts upwards. So we may see less of these cold snaps as we move forward. In fact, these were much more common uh, a few decades ago, but we we may see more extreme cold snaps when they do happen because of these blocking patterns. So I'm glad you asked that. Uh, and in that in that uh, vein, Shanika asks on Facebook, is this going to be the new normal? A new normal is an interesting phrase that has sort of uh, come into the headlines just like polar vortex in the past couple of years. Uh, our normal is continually shifting. Uh, you know, everything that we've done to change our climate in the past century uh, has already, or already sort of locked in stone what will happen for the next uh, 50 plus years. So uh, we will continue to see changes. We are not at our new normal yet, but things that were extremes in the past are becoming uh, averages now and in fact, Environment Canada has already changed their seasonal numbers uh, rather than looking all the way back to when records began for most of our stations the turn of the century. We're now just looking at the past 30 year averages because our numbers have already shifted upwards. So if you're thinking you remember these cold spells and snowy winters a lot more when you were younger, uh, if you had to walk backwards in the snow as I did uphill both ways, um, you're not wrong. The numbers have already changed and we are seeing less snowy winters for most Canadian cities. Uh, if you're just joining us on Facebook or Twitter, these are great questions coming in about the cold snap we have going on across the country. I'm checking your questions. Uh, my producer is sending them to me live, so keep them coming in. Craig Underhill asks on Facebook, Eastern Ontario seems to be dodging this pattern. Any reason for that? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, taking you back to the current big picture, I've got the wind chill on here. Uh, right now, the wind chill... Oops, I better uh, not lose my connection to your questions. <laughs> right now the contours in the background are temperatures and then I've got the wind chills on top. Um, the winds are coming straight from the north so the jet stream is bringing down that arctic air across the prairies which is why we're seeing the heart of this cold air in uh, Manitoba and northern Ontario and it's actually bringing the cold air down south of the Great Lakes. Again that's the flow of air from the north through the prairies to south of the Great Lakes. So we're actually seeing the coldest of the air in through the US Midwest. Their wind chills are actually closer to minus 40, minus 50, even approaching minus 60 uh, through the early morning hours. And that's why Eastern Ontario hasn't quite got into the dig of that Arctic air. It is shifting eastward over the next couple of days. So your temperature is actually dropping in Eastern Ontario uh, for tomorrow. But I don't think you'll get into the heart of that Arctic air. And it all has to do uh, with the way that the winds are blowing straight from the north down around the Great Lakes. A uh, girlene core on Facebook asks, how cold will Ottawa be? Oh, some good Eastern Ontario viewers. And how long will the pol polar vortex stay in place? So it does look like this blocking pattern is locked in for another couple of days, but we will see relief by the time we hit Friday and the weekend. It's not a massive return to seasonal, I should tell you, but at least we'll get out of the dangerous cold. And Ottawa, um, if I can take you back to that forecast, let's take a look at your wind chills. So wind chill today, uh, minus 22 is your forecast in through Ottawa. So still cold, but not quite the minus 32 wind chills we're seeing in Southern Ontario or the minus 40s, minus 50s back in Northern Ontario uh, or the prairies. So taking you through to tomorrow morning, Ottawa, you are going to be dropping down another uh, five or 10 degrees and your wind chills will also be dropping. So Thursday morning could be your coldest one yet. Uh, we'll see similar numbers for Friday morning, but then by the time we hit the weekend, we'll start to see some milder air move in. So you've still got a couple days to go out on the East Coast, or Eastern Ontario, I should say. Uh, Dawson Irvine from Saskatchewan asks on Facebook, our current temperature without the wind chill is minus 35. Why do some meteorologists have no use for the wind chill? So glad somebody asked a wind chill question because uh, you're right, there are very different things. Wind chill is a value, it is not, uh, it, it, it is an it is a feels like temperature it isn't an actual index uh, or it isn't an actual value like temperatures are uh, so the wind chill is what it feels like when you factor in the winds and it really only applies to humans and animals and really only applies to exposed skin so when we have a wind that actually uh, takes away your body heat faster than no wind so it means that your body 
uh, is unable to stay warmer if or stay as warm as you would if there were no winds. So it increases the uh, rate of, of speed that your body cools down and it makes it feel that much colder. And that's why wind chill is dangerous. And we do use wind chill uh, because if you don't have gloves on or if your face isn't protected and you're out in minus 50 wind chills, frostbite can set in and hypothermia can set in in a, in a matter of minutes. So the winds really do play a role in health and that's why I like to use wind chills when there is a, a significant wind chill factor. And in this case, it's a general rule of thumb, but uh, today we're sort of seeing temperatures uh, a good 10 degrees warmer than the wind chills. Winds though are coming straight from the north. They're gusting to 50, 60 kilometers per hour for many of our major cities. And that really does uh, push that feels like temperature uh, into the minus 30, minus 40, even minus 50 range. And that's why uh, it does get dangerous and, and why I factor in wind chill. I know there's a bit of controversy sometimes with wind chill. We don't always need to be using wind chill or Humidex for that matter, which is the uh, humidity side of things when it's really warm. Uh, sometimes uh, winds really aren't a factor and so there really isn't a need to add a couple of extra uh, virtual degrees onto a temperature. But in this case, I think it really does apply. Uh, Sybil on Facebook is asking what's expected in Calgary. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Alberta because uh, you are sort of sharing in similar conditions as the West Coast here, taking you back to the current wind chills. Uh, we've got this, this deep Arctic vort uh, polar vortex in place across central Canada. But on the west side, we've got actually got this high pressure. So uh, air is actually moving up from the south for BC and Alberta. And instead of record cold, we've actually got temperatures at or just above seasonal. So uh, right now it's on the plus side of the zero degree mark in through Calgary. I think you're expected to hit uh, at least the high single digits today. Uh, and that goes for most of Alberta, most of British Columbia, and in fact, all the way up to the Yukon actually experiencing above normal temperatures right now because of this high pressure ridge. And that's something to keep in mind uh, going back to these cold temperatures across North America. The atmosphere is always trying to balance itself out. So if you've got extreme cold conditions in one part of the world, you're likely seeing extreme hot conditions uh, somewhere else. So the undulating jet stream is bringing that warm air up from the north in the west and then bringing that cold air down across a huge swath of central and eastern Canada. So yes, very different story in Calgary versus say uh, Flin Flon today. Honeylin Mandeville asks on Facebook, Nova Scotia hasn't been hit with much snow, but a lot more rain this winter. Is this due to the jet stream as well? Yes, uh, the East Coast has had, the extreme East Coast, especially uh, in through uh, Halifax, um, has had a milder than normal winter. And often you don't see as much snow along the Nova Scotia coast as inland sections. And that's because the jet stream often rides right along uh, the east side of the Maritimes. And it's just the way that our jet stream undulates around North America. It often, again, dives down in through the south or in through central Canada and then rides back up again across the east. And that's actually what's happening today. It's only minus five wind chill in through Fredericton. Now your temperatures are probably closer to the freezing mark. So that jet stream, uh, if you're on the right side of it, then you're much warmer than if you're on the lower, colder side of it. And the jet stream often runs right through the Maritimes. And the jet stream sometimes in winter months is a really good uh, determination of where the freezing mark happens. Not always, but in this case, uh, anything to the right of the jet stream is going to stay uh, much warmer and that's what's happened this winter for much of Nova Scotia. It's been right on that line and while parts of New Brunswick, PEI, uh, Newfoundland, if you're uh, watching right now, you have had a very snowy uh, winter, but those of you on the other side of the jet stream and sometimes it is just a matter of 20 to 50 kilometers uh, get a very different side of the story. K-Man on YouTube asks, how will the wildlife fare uh, in this weather? Yeah, this is a, a good question as well. The, um, the wind chill only affects humans and animals. And so this is a big concern, not just for pets who do feel that wind chill factor, but for uh, livestock across the prairies and, and Ontario and Quebec who are really feeling the heart of that polar vortex. So animals do get affected by that wind chill. And it's something that, uh, that farmers and, and pet owners uh, really think about is bringing them in this time of the year when temperatures and wind chills are so extreme. I know, uh, you know, even my giant Bernese mountain dog who has a lot of fur, uh, 
and can withstand very cold temperatures, this is extreme even for pets. So it's a great point to bring up. Uh, think about activities that you can uh, take them, that you can do with them indoors when wind chills are this extreme. We've only got a couple more days to go uh, before the wind chill warn, the extreme cold warnings and the extreme cold alerts uh, should be dropped by this weekend. Uh, Dawson Irvine has another question. When will Saskatchewan warm up to average temperatures? So you will warm up as we head into this weekend, but I don't see temperatures warming back up to seasonal. We might have to wait a few more days into early next week. I see a big shift happen in our happening in our jet stream uh, around early to mid next week. And that's actually when the West Coast and Alberta will get uh, colder than normal. And that's when I think we'll see some warmer air move back into central and eastern Canada. So while temperatures will be warming out of the record cold for the weekend, you might have to wait a few more days to get back up to seasonal. These are all uh, great questions, by the way, for everyone joining us on uh, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube Live. Keep them coming. I'm taking your questions, by the way. My producer is sending them to me here. Uh, so uh, keep them coming in. I'm meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff and happy to take a few more questions uh, about the deep freeze that's in place across North America right now. Emmett Singh on Facebook asks, is it going to be colder every year now? So generally our, our, t our average temperatures in Canada are actually rising, but that's not to say with climate change, we won't see these cold snaps and we've always had cold snaps and we've always had heat waves and heat and hot spells, but the baseline of our temperatures are shifting up. And we talked about this a little earlier on in the, in the uh, Q and A. Um, what we're also seeing is more of these blocking patterns. So while on average, our temperatures will continue to warm over the next uh, few decades across the uh, country, we will also continue to see these extremes. We'll get continued cold snaps, continued big snowstorms, but on average, our temperatures will increase and our snow on average will decrease for most uh, Canadian cities. But what we may see more of are these extreme events and extreme weather events don't always mean or aren't always connected to your hot weather uh, events that you think about. Sometimes they are these deep freezes because again, the jet stream is uh, meandering more, getting locked in place, blocking systems more. So we may end up with more extreme cold snaps from time to time, but on average, our temperatures are rising. A uh, question from Morgan Richter on YouTube. Should I go snowboarding? Is it too cold? As a snowboarder, I, I feel your pain. It, uh, if, you can, if you can bundle up and wear all the right layers, um, it's up to you whether you want to venture out in it, but it's definitely the exposed skin and standing still in that when, when you are exposed to wind chills that are the most dangerous, and especially at altitude when you're up on the mountains, um, those wind chill factors will definitely be greater. Temperatures are colder and winds are usually stronger at altitude. So you'll just want to check the alpine forecast and make a decision about uh, whether you want to do the full face masks and wear multiple layers and be prepared to head in early. But everyone handles the hot and uh, the heat and the cold differently. Uh, but it is, again, ex exposed skin that you're going to uh, want to worry about. Paul Tilly on Facebook asks, what's happening for Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador? Yeah, good question. Going back to the uh, wind chill maps right now, we haven't touched on, on Newfoundland and Labrador yet. Surprisingly, uh, you aren't seeing the colds of the air. Normally, we do see some Arctic air in winter spilling down across uh, Eastern Canada uh, more than we do in through Ontario. But right now, I was talking about that jet stream. You're actually on the other side of the jet stream. The jet stream sort of cutting up across uh, Atlantic Canada. So uh, you're actually above seasonal for much of uh, Newfoundland, Newfoundland right now. Western Labrador, you are getting into that Arctic deep freeze. And in fact, let's just check here. I think looking at the warnings from Environment Canada, there is a wind warning in effect for uh, Western Newfoundland. And it looks like a blowing snow advisory for Western Labrador. So there is some winter weather happening and it's really just the edge of that Arctic boundary that's uh, encroaching on Labrador and Newfoundland. You will get a little colder over the next couple of days, but you're on the other side of that jet stream. Speaking of jet stream and while we're over here, I know this is an intense graphic, but jet stream, the position of the jet stream is something as a, a meteorologist I check every day because it not only tells me where current weather systems are going to be carried to next, but also shows me the boundary between different air masses of different temperatures. So this is an Environment Canada analysis. I promise I won't take too long on this uh, intense graphic. Uh, it's an Environment Canada analysis of the upper atmosphere, the level at which the jet stream lies. So 
So I don't know if you can make out the uh, Great Lakes here. This is the west coast of BC. Here's the east coast of uh, North America. And the hatched sort of lines here, uh, those are the wind bars. And you can see this pattern where they're the strongest rising up over the west, and that's why we have warm air in BC and Alberta, and then diving down across central and eastern Canada. This big low pressure system is actually the polar vortex. So that's what's in place right now. That's why all that cold air is in place across central and eastern Canada. And then the jet stream drives right back up again. So parts of the Maritimes and Newfoundland, you're on the other side of the jet stream and seeing warmer than normal temperatures. So yes, it's a, it's a very busy graphic, but this is an actual analysis and one of the charts that meteorologists look at uh, when we're doing our, our analysis to figure out where the jet stream is and what that will be doing to our, our weather systems. I think we have time for uh, at least a few more questions. Terry G Gayton asks on Facebook, any word if that cold Arctic air is coming to Vancouver Island as snow? Uh, so we have had a very mild winter on the west coast, going back to that jet stream. We've had a lot of high pressure systems that have meant warmer than normal temperatures uh, for December and January at least, and that goes for the island as, as well as most of British Columbia. In fact, uh, we're actually in a bit of snow deficit for most of the province, and that's something that BC and Alberta already looking towards uh, the fire season. The amount of snow we get in the winter really uh, plays a huge role in what kind of a fire season we've had. Uh, we've had back-to-back -back record fire seasons on the west coast, so the fact that we are in a snow deficit right now is uh, concerning, and we are below average uh, on Vancouver Island as well as the rest of the province for that moisture content. And I just don't see a big snow dump happening for the west coast. We are going to see that reversal of the jet stream happen uh, early next week. Early long range models indicate that we'll be getting colder on the west coast and you'll finally be getting back up to at least closer to seasonal for the rest of the country. Uh, but I don't see it bringing a big snow dump. It's still early in the season that we could see something uh, through February, but we're sort of getting late in the game for the west coast and for Vancouver Island. Oh, I think that I dropped my mic. It, probably during my intense jet stream explainer. Um, so let me put it back here. Thank you for those of you who uh, noted that. Um, these are great, by the way. Uh, we've got time for a few more. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, I'm taking your questions uh, via my producer who's sending them to me on my phone. Uh, Ma Marie Graham asks on Facebook, is it true that winter is getting shorter? Yeah, our seasons are definitely shifting across the country because of climate change and not every city not every canadian city is see, seeing that shift in the same way uh, but climate change is definitely shifting our seasons and for most canadian cities that means that uh, we're seeing our springs start earlier our when our spring thaws happen earlier and more rapidly and uh, we're seeing our summers extend through the fall months and that's having huge implications on uh, growing seasons, it's having huge implications on the uh, freshet uh, in uh, British Columbia and the prairies. So we are seeing a shift in our, our typical seasons and it is a slow shift. So it doesn't happen all of a sudden, it happens over the course of, of decades. And if you think back to the summers or winters you had when you were kids or, or when your parents were kids, uh, that shift has already changed substantially. We're seeing much less snow across most of our Canadian Canadian winters, uh, most of our Canadian cities than we did uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And the trend is that most of that snow will be replaced with rain. That, that's not every single city. We are seeing some changes, especially coastal cities. Uh, that change actually might mean more snow for you and less rain because of extreme events. But yes, generally our winters uh, are getting shorter and we're seeing more rain and less snow uh, to make up that moisture content. And that is, that is having uh, big implications. Martin Perry on YouTube asks, just wondering if the cold air is heading over us and warm air is heading north on the west coast, what is the temperature at the North Pole? Uh, let's take a look at the temperature contour right now over the north. So this is a look at the temperature contours. I think I might have taken off my, oh yeah, ignore the wind chill uh, because these are temperatures, but I've put back on the um, the legend here so you can see the whites are closer to the minus 30 minus 40 mark so we haven't completely lost it's kind of hard to see the cold air over the arctic right now the arctic is uh, 
above seasonal, but we're not talking above the freezing mark. Uh, we're still seeing temperatures well below the freezing mark for the North Pole, but this is a, a pattern that has been alarming in the past couple of years. We're seeing more and more of this displacement of the polar vortex. I know we haven't really had it in Canada for a few years now, but it's been moving uh, through the uh, sub latitude levels of, of the, the Earth over the past couple of years, and the Arctic has actually seen a record warmth and uh, that has again big implications for sea ice, uh, melting glaciers. Uh, this is a short range uh, timeline that we're looking at. Again, just the past really three or four years, we've seen record breaking heat in the Arctic. Right now, uh, we're not record breaking. Where we're really seeing that push of uh, warm air though is in through Northern Europe. That's where we're sort of unusually warm right now, and that's what's pushed the bulk of the cold air up and over, but it hasn't completely pushed it out of the Arctic. That being said, it is milder than normal right now. Ali Hader on Facebook asks, do you think wind chill is a useful metric? I do, I do think wind chill is a useful uh, uh, value to talk about when we do have strong winds and extreme cold temperatures. I think sometimes we can overuse it as meteorologists, you know, or, uh, when we're talking about humid X or wind chill factors on a day where there isn't perhaps a huge amount of wind or moisture, uh, it sort of adds to the dramatic sometimes. But in this case, wind chill is a, a very real factor for exposed skin. And it's one that Environment Canada is taking into account uh, when they issue their extreme cold alerts and warnings that are in place across a huge swath of the country. And that really is because of how brisk those winds are gusting between 40 and 60 kilometers per hour for much of the country and that's taking away body heat faster than if there was no wind so it is uh, feeling colder on exposed skin and i do think that's a very useful useful metric for people tyler dickinson on facebook asks is there extreme cold weather in the southeastern part of new brunswick uh, so getting back to the current uh, temperatures right now New Brunswick is sort of right on the jet stream line. So the jet stream, which is coming up from the south here, anything to the left is starting to get into that polar vortex. Anything to the right is dealing with milder air. You can see the greens in place. So you were asking about southeast. The southeast still in a milder air mass. And it's amazing, you drive north into uh, Miramichi and your temperature is probably dropping a good five to 10 degrees. Now this Arctic air mass is shifting eastward. So heads up, things are going to get colder over the next uh, couple of days. Penny Buyer asks on Facebook, what will the changing climate do to our boreal forests? Uh, yeah, that's a, a topic I don't know a lot about specifically, but I, I did a lot of work on what climate change will look like in British Columbia over the next uh, three decades. And the impact that it's already having on our forests is, is uh, hugely apparent. One of the big implications we're already seeing in a warming climate and our forests is pests. Things like the pine beetle out west, uh, the, the fact that we are getting shorter seasons and we're not seeing temperatures dip below freezing as much as we did in decades past, uh, that's not killing off the pests the same way. And so we're, we are seeing and worried about outbreaks of uh, pests and things like the pine beetles moving up from the south, staying longer. Uh, that's, that's a big concern for our boreal forests and uh, forest fires. Uh, our seasons are getting hotter, longer and drier. Forest fires will continue uh, to be a bigger problem across uh, North America. And the other factor is that the kinds of trees that will survive or, or be more resilient is changing. And that's something that uh, forest man management is already thinking about uh, looking to the south and seeing what trees are thri thriving in a, warm and a warmer climate and thinking about planting those to replace trees after a forest fire or after um, after uh, tree cutting. Uh, we're starting to think about a different kind of forest for a, a different kind of future because trees can't get up and move. They have to adapt to a warming climate and uh, not all of them will. So uh, the boreal forests are taking a uh, are going to be uh, seeing a big hit because of climate change. Amanda Jean asks on Twitter, will this hit Alberta bad, specifically Edmonton? So we mentioned uh, earlier, we were looking at the conditions in Alberta, who is on the other side of that jet stream. Here's just a look at the temperature contours again. So we were just in New Brunswick where that jet stream was dividing New Brunswick in half. On the other side of the country, the jet stream is dividing Alberta in half. So you go up to high level, uh, conditions are 
well into the minus 30 range for wind chills in through Edmonton and Calgary. You're actually much warmer than normal right now, at least in the high single digits, I think. And because this polar vortex is shifting eastward, uh, I don't expect to see you really get into the deep freeze in through Alberta over the next couple of days. So it's really just the extreme ends of Canada that aren't sharing in the, uh, the solidarity of uh, a, a deep freeze right now. If you're just joining us on Facebook Live or uh, YouTube, I'm taking your questions here. My producer is sending them to me. I'm meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff about this deep freeze. I think we've got time for a few more. I'll take one from Andrea Vaughn from Toronto. I live on the 12th floor. Is the temperature or wind colder as you go up in a high rise? Very interesting question. So generally in our atmosphere, temperatures do cool as you rise. There's actually a rate that we all know, a meteorologist know, uh, that temperatures cool at as you rise in height. So depending on how high you are, I mean, if we're talking 12 stories, probably not a huge difference. Uh, but if you're getting up to sort of uh, higher than, you know, five to two to 500 meters, then you probably would see a temperature drop of a couple of degrees. And generally winds are stronger, higher up in the atmosphere. So I like your I like your logic on this. I think that if you're out on a balcony on the 12th floor, a uh, wind chill might be a little colder than it would be down on ground level. Aeon on YouTube asks, is the polar vortex only shifting on the North Pole or at the South as well? Uh, I haven't actually taken a look at the uh, South Pole. Um, they have very different weather patterns than than we do in the North. And in fact, uh, very different kind of impacts of climate change that we're seeing in the South. It's not quite the same. We don't have the same kind of polar vortex that we do in the north. So uh, conditions are v right now very cold in the uh, on the South Pole, sort of, I think we're looking at fairly seasonal uh, conditions. But while there's been so much research gone into looking at our sea ice and the impact of climate change on the sea ice and the melting of our ice caps um, in the north, uh, there's a different kind of impact to the south. Uh, we're seeing those glaciers melt from underneath because the warmers are water uh, are, are warmer rather than the air being warmer. So we're actually seeing the impact in the south happen to the oceans, which in turn is melting the glaciers from underneath. So oftentimes we don't see as dramatic as uh, an impact when you're looking at the surface temperatures and you're looking at the melting from above in the Antarctic, uh, but it's because the melting is happening from underneath. So we don't see the same kind of shift of the uh, subpolar vortex or the polar vortex as we do in the north, but they're seeing the impacts of climate change in a different way. Okay, I think we've got one more question and then I will wrap it up. Raquel Kandel asks on Facebook, how cold does it need to get for a college girl to wear a hat and gloves? Well, I think that uh, when we're talking about these wind chills, I think that you should be trying to cover up uh, any, any exposed skin. Uh, these are dangerous wind chill valleys. If you're under the extreme cold alert, and I've got that warning up across a huge swath of the country, basically Saskatchewan through to Northwestern New Brunswick, you are in an extreme cold alert. This is where exposed skin can freeze within a matter of minutes. I would definitely recommend hat and gloves over the next couple of days. As I mentioned, we will see temperatures rebound a little as we head into the weekend, but it might take in through next week for us to really get back to seasonal. And that's just about when us on the West Coast will be getting into a little bit of a cold spell. So we'll get our turn. Uh, probably not as dramatic as you're seeing across Central and Eastern Canada, but it will all balance out in the end. Thank you so much for all of your questions. I'll see if I can get to them, uh, any that I haven't answered on Facebook and YouTube uh, afterwards but uh, really engaging questions uh, from coast to coast. So thank you very much and stay warm.